All right, so today uh, we're going to just talk just a little bit, be a short video about uh, asymmetrical lobes. A bunch of people have asked about asymmetrical lobes and how that works and degree in cams and finding intake center lines. So hang loose and we'll, uh, we'll unpack that a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put my glasses on because I can't have see. We got power. We are back in the shop. That's a wonderful thing. It literally, I was trying to get ready to, to uh, do this video today, and I looked outside and the power was was back on the shop. I could I could see the the light over the parking lot. <clears throat> so hopefully we not gonna have no more power issues. When we talk about uh, when we talk about asymmetrical lobes, uh, and we've talked about it a little bit in other videos, but I've, I've had just recently in some of the other deals we've been doing, I had several people ask again uh, some specific questions. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to answer those as best I can. So, and uh, and Andrew will put some illustrations on the screen. So you got a lobe. You know, and just to you know, we'll we'll put it up here. So we got a lobe. We're gonna draw a straight line down the center, and uh, from from heel to toe, and that's gonna be our center line. So ultimately, regardless of what's going on on either side, because we run into this with uh, asymmetrical lobes or uh, inverse radius lobes and we see a lot of inverse radius stuff on like finger follower and camel rocker systems in this overhead uh, cam stuff so for most push rod V8s and even probably most direct action flat tappet type stuff uh, where the asymmetry happens most of the time is in the closing side and it usually happens you know near the ramp in the closing side so what you'll see is so we talked about in the last video we talked about intensity so uh, and, and I've got some examples here because we, I just uh, run a cam that I just reground, so I got some fresh data that we can talk about. So, um, so you've got intensity, and so major in, so we talked about hydraulic intensity. So major intensity is the twenty thousandths lift duration minus the fifty thousandths lift duration. So generally, if we're gonna rate a mechanical cam, we're gonna use major intensity, which is the 20 from the 50. So this particular cam, the intake has a intensity of 35 and the exhaust has an intensity of 41.5. So the opening side on the intake, so we got 35 intensity total. So you've got to divide that in for on each side, but it doesn't always divide equally because sometimes we have asymmetry or we call it span. So span is the distance of uh, intensity on each side. So if you got 35 or, or you know use 30 for an easy number, it could be 15 and 15, or it could be 14 and 16, or 13 and 17. So it, it could be a lot of different things, but this one is 35 total. On the intake, it's 18.5. On the, on the opening side, it's 18.54. And on the closing side, it's 16.5. So it's not tremendously faster on the, on the opening side, but it is faster. Now, uh, in retrospect, on the exhaust side, um, the opening side is 21 and the closing side is 20.5. So it's, it's just 
ultimately it's the same that that half probably was just in how to design data laid out it, it probably wasn't you know asymmetrical on purpose or had span on purpose so how you can so without a cam doctor uh you know you may think it's it's impossible to see this stuff but it's not so when you degree your cam you can literally uh you know go to uh 20 lift on the intake and write down the degree wheel reading go to 50 on the intake write down the degree wheel reading and then go all the way around to the closing side of the same lobe and do the same thing again right down to 50 right down to 20 and then you can you know add and subtract those numbers together and come up with the total uh intensity major intensity and then the span of the intensity and that'll tell you whether or not you have an asymmetrical lobe or you have a symmetrical lobe um generally speaking not always not every time but generally speaking uh, most you know good designs are gonna uh, be asymmetrical they're gonna have a span um now having said that uh I, I've, I've seen some people asking about um inverse radius lobes so an inverse radius and we'll put a picture up but an inverse radius and i don't have anything here this inverse radius because i mean for the most part nobody uses that stuff anymore except except i do have some um uh, in in overhead cam stuff and, and the problem the, the reason it, that it's used in overhead cam stuff is when you've got a finger follower or a, or a, a, a camel rocker the the center line as it goes through the cycle you know because like on a uh, I don't know if I got a picture I'll, I'll see if I can put a picture up but the way like you think of a modular forward or 2300 forward or the coyotes so you've got you know a hydraulic lash adjuster here the valves here the cams here and as it's rolling around and opening the rocker is doing this so the actual uh wheel that's following the cam is is moving in an arc so that arc makes the valve event, the valve motion a lot different on the opening side versus the closing side. Therefore, a lot of, when you look at the lobe of many like overhead cam stuff, like I know I see it on, uh, it's not quite so prevalent like on the the coyotes and the uh, mod forwards because they're so big but when you get down you know a really small lobe like the atlas gm stuff or the echo or the 2300 forwards the when you look at the lobe it almost looks like a kidney bean and you know when you look at that you, you would think that you know the because it's so much asymmetry and, and inverse flank on the closing side that the valve motion on this side of the lobe and the valve motion on this side of the lobe have got to be way different because I mean they just physically look totally different but the way the arc swings of the rocker the valve motion on both sides are the same or you know it could have span and, and be like you know this stuff we're talking about but essentially it's very very similar and um but the reason it has to have such uh an inverse radius is because of the way the arc happens when the rocker is swinging and that's why the the overhead cam stuff is is really complicated in the fact that the lobe design is complicated because most if not all lobe designers today work backwards from valve motion so they have a valve motion that they want and all of that 
through math is worked backwards into what that lobe has to look like to create the valve motion that they want. So that's that's a lot of math and a lot of spreadsheets and uh, a lot of coffee and Advil. And it's above my pay grade, so, but I'm just saying that that's where you really see inverse radius stuff. And, and you gotta be careful with inverse radius stuff because with uh, normal grinders, most of them run an 18 inch wheel and a lot of um, a lot of inverse radiuses the the radius is smaller than nine inches which would be what the wheel is so you have to run a smaller wheel or you know like a lot of the cnc grinders are running a 10 or a 12 inch wheel and uh, so they can do a lot smaller uh, inverse flank than a manual grinder can but we can put a smaller wheel on and, and do inverse radiuses. But again, and, and, and for the most part, most people just don't use an inverse radius. And, a, and it was, a, like I say, it was a big thing. It's still, even though it looks like, you know, it's dipping in and doing all this stuff, it's still, in a, in a push rod deal, well, even in a swing and follower deal, it's still making positive acceleration. You know, it's still uh, just translating in, into linear motion at the valve. So it's, you know, it's not like snake oil. It's just instead of going this way to make to to get from here to here, they just went this way to get from here to here. And sometimes I think, you know, go and again, I you know, I, I'm not a load designer, but that inverse radius and then having to go back the other direction, you know, at a really high surface footage, you know, I think that could be problematic because you go in one way and now you got to completely go the other way. So, you know, they, there's a lot of stuff going on there and apparently it's really hard to manufacture. Even with CNC equipment, it's really hard. So if stuff's hard to make, it's probably not uh, ideal anyway, because if stuff's hard to make, it's, it's quality's hard, right? So. That's why, but I know people get kind of, you know, fixated on some of that stuff and it's cool to talk about and all that junk, but, you know, in practicalities, most of the time it's just not, you know, just cause you had some of that stuff or it's out there, it's not gonna, you're not gonna set new track records with it. You know, there's, there's so much going on with this normal stuff that we still ain't got figured out that, you know, all of that's a whole, a whole nother deal. So, I have seen stuff with back to this span or asymmetry. You know, like this is 18 and a half and 16 and a half. So that's only two different. You know, I've seen some stuff, four or five different. So I've seen stuff with a lot more asymmetry than this. And I'll, uh, let me see, I'll bring you around here. So this is, this is the lobes that we just run this is the intake this is the exhaust and this is the velocity curve and we've we've talked about the way the ramps are and, and that kind of stuff but for the most part i don't know if you can hopefully you can see the cursor down here on the bottom left all of that asymmetry is generally going to happen in this area here so our you know, maybe that's better in this area here, like here and here. You know, up here, most of this stuff is is symmetrical for the most part. Now, I do have some really big, big lift stuff that it's obvious that even up here, past the nose radius, it's asymmetrical. But but like I say, don't don't worry about you know trying to do nothing crazy with the center lines. I mean that line straight down at peak lift, you know going back 50, and you don't even have to go back 50. I mean sometimes I'll go back 20 or 10 or it, you know whatever, just as long as you know when you find a peak lift, you know you back up the same amount on either side of the peak, and 50 is fine but 40 is fine too. So it, it, it's not super critical that it's 
a, a given number it's just that the number that you do is the same on both sides so you just back up whatever you know 20 30 40 50 on this side and do the same thing on the other side split the difference and that is the center line even if the lobe's symmetrical or not symmetrical because when it tails out the ends are in the same place the asymmetry is up here you know higher up so it's it's you know from seat to seat it's, it's still the same difference ultimately so uh, th th that's that and hopefully uh, that'll clear that up and I don't know if there's if there's more stuff about this kind of stuff that you want to know about and you know I'm if I'm qualified to answer the question I 100% I will so you know feel free to just put it in the comments if you got more questions and like I say we're gonna try to just slowly go through this stuff and try to make some of it make some kind of sense and at least if it I mean I, I'm not saying that you can use it always but at least you'll have a better understanding of like what's going on with all of this because people still think it's you know like black magic and it's confusing a lot of this stuff is confusing and it took me a really long time to get my right mind wrapped around some of this stuff but and I still have trouble with some of it but um it's getting better as we go and we're just learning all the time and I enjoy sharing and I hope you enjoy me sharing it with you and you know as long as that's the case we're gonna keep doing it so hopefully uh hopefully this is helpful uh let me know in the comments and like i say if you got other ideas let me know and uh, i'll show you this little little big block here that we knocked out it had a hurt lobe and we salvaged it it was it was it was pretty good it wasn't nothing real crazy and the core was good so we was able to put it back almost right where it was within a couple of degrees and the lift was within five or ten so uh it's going i think it's a blower deal i'm pretty sure so that slightly softer exhaust load may, may be helpful anyway because the uh you know that blower stuff is having to open under pressure so the exhaust lobe gets the brunt anywhere the exhaust lifter so it'll kill the wheel sometimes if you ain't careful so anyway uh i'm glad we got power back and it will be tomorrow we will be back in action full time in the shop so uh but don't blow us up because uh, tomorrow for sure is going to be catch up with all of this junk but hopefully maybe by friday or monday everything will be back to normal and uh if you got if you're waiting on stuff from us we got a pile it looks like to go out tomorrow ups so if you if your stuff ain't on the way it will be tomorrow thank y'all so much and we'll see you on the next one